hi guys azb here thank you for watching this and i also want to extend my gratitude for all the positive response and feedback i've gotten so the pre-scene run about go the pre-scene document is extremely important as cma students as case study students you all know that the entire unseen all the three or four or whatever number of tasks that you get is based on the pre-scene which means we need to be really thorough and we've already looked at the entire pre-scene we've read it this is the pre-scene summarization for any and all students who are getting ready for the may and august 2020 strategic case study exams let's have a look you are the senior manager finance of runabout group which is the parent company the company is of course runabout you report directly to the board and you play an advisory role on special projects and strategic matters the country of operations is what is our focus next it's a large prosperous country what's the country Zealand. Zealand's population is 1 billion plus doesn't it remind you of china major cities have seen rapid growth Many cities are struggling with traffic congestion and resulting pollution. The currency is G dollars. There is an active and well-regulated stock exchange, the Zealand Stock Exchange. I'm going to refer to it as GSX moving forward. Listed companies in GSX has to comply with IFRSs and adhere to Zealand Code of Corporate Governance. Road and pedestrian safety is a matter for respective town and city councils and transport companies require licenses from these local bodies. Cities encourage development of bicycle sharing. That takes us to the micro mobility industry. A relatively recent and innovation driven industry dating from early 2000s. It basically is made up of one way rental services of personal mobility devices PMDs enables end users to complete the last mile of a journey quickly and efficiently is the selling factor a personal mobility device can be a bicycle scooter or hoverboard the typical user is a commuter who needs a fast and efficient way to travel a relatively short distance augments traditional public transport micro mobility like uh, buses train trams etc instead of completely replacing it allows users to avoid walking long distances and impact of slow moving traffic then the pre-scene takes us to focus on bicycle sharing which is sort of an industry spark started in early 2000s short-term bicycle rental capability was offered service provider creates a network of bicycle docking stations or docks across carefully selected locations in the city Bicycles can be released from the dock by registered users via swiping a card or entering an one-time password OTP. Users are charged a hiring fee when the bicycle is returned to a dock by the user and hiring charges are usually cheap. Dock locations must be strategically decided for example to enable effective last mile coverage. Relatively cheap, effective and a convenient way to travel it's faster than walking and even the bus if high levels of traffic exists. The typical users include students, tourists and short distance work commuters, flat dwellers. And it's normally illegal to be ridden on the pedestrian's payment. Usually a separate bicycle lane is designated. You probably have those in your countries or else bicycles require the main road to be used. A large number of cyclists on the road usually lead to increased number of injuries, thus raising the level of risk. Strict legislation has been introduced to control these risks on the roads in many countries. Cyclists are required to wear crash helmets by the law in several countries. I hope it's so in your country as well, which means that the user must carry a helmet on hand or risk being stopped by the police. The popularity keeps increasing with the numbers of trips made by users is steadily increasing. However, technology has been a disruptor leading to the introduction of various other PMDs. That brings us to alternative PMDs in the micro mobility industry. What are these? 
the precinct tells us there are three electric bicycles which are battery powered motor included bicycles that augment pedaling batteries are automatically recharged at the docking stations number two is electric scooters battery powered scooters with recharge capability at the docking stations no effort is required attracted some controversy because they are ridden on payments and also have been involved in accidents that involve pedestrians number three are hoverboards also known as self-balancing scooters they are slower than electric scooters and generally ridden on payments in a city context rechargeable battery powered and has different sizes which range from kids to adult markets and that is where i want to take you to this website razor.com right so razor.com is a us based entity which manufactures and sells hoverboards these are some of their most popular products you can click on these you can go to the website you can click on the products you can read up on the product you can watch the trailers of the product and they also sell the hover tracks 2.0 battery and charging dock so you can basically understand the dynamics of the product really well by browsing or by going through or by checking out this particular website definitely spend some time on this it will help you understand what's going on overall and that takes us back to our pre-scene the hoverboard so the make of the hoverboard especially for us it's manufactured by Minering Robotics which is based in Dillon we'll talk about it later the product is said to be a combination of ingenious engineering and electronics capability it's two wheeled rechargeable battery powered requiring high voltages and currents the components are electric motors a computer gyroscope platform and battery the electric motor is a is each wheel is powered by its own electric motor which enables the hoverboard to steer the computer the electric motors are controlled by an onboard computer that is programmed to manage both stability and movement the gyroscope is built into the platform that enables computer to measure the angle of the platform the platform is strong enough to carry the weight of the user the battery hoverboards generally use 36 volt batteries which provide sufficient power to ensure satisfactory performance so these are the five components these are extract of the pre-scene itself and it would be really sensible for us to understand that these five components make up what a hoverboard ultimately is and as you can see this sort of this diagram is sort of like a segue which has gone through some recent announcements uh, i hope you've seen them if not let me take a moment to show you by the end of this video Moving on, the pre-scene takes us to the usage of a hoverboard in general. It is simple and requires no training. Users stand on the platform. You lean slightly toward the front to go forward. You lean slightly back to slow and reverse. You lean to the left or right to turn to that direction. Speed can be regulated by leaning more to go faster or less to slow down. Designed to operate on flat, smooth and regular surfaces offers a slight height advantage over pedestrians which brings us to the kind of users that hoverboards were popular with security staff area supervisors factory industrial areas etc airport and railway station staff and paramedics the popularity of the hoverboard early hoverboards were quite expensive but became accepted quickly due to its highly efficient mobility offering Especially in areas where a lot of people walk, high pedestrian density areas such as campuses, hospitals, theme parks, shopping malls, large rail and bus stations, airports, etc. This opened a niche for user categories such as security guards, flow supervisors, paramedics, first aiders, etc. That is the popularity pitch. The risk associated in using a hoverboard, there are several kinds of risks, several incidents that were highlighted, which I've summarized here for you. There is risk related to terrain. It is not recommendable to be ridden on roads and damaged irregular terrain. Risk related to the way of use. Careless riding can cause injuries, right? 
for riders as well as pedestrians. Risks related to pathways. Depending on how hoverboards are used in the pavement or the roads. There are different lanes, so you've got to be careful around those pathways where you can use a hoverboard or not. There are severe complaints with hoverboard misuse with respect to where and how you ride it. And obviously the risk of explosions, rather catching fire etc. Mainly due to overheated batteries or loose connections causing short circuits that can catch fire or even rough handling of the device. That brings us to Runabout Group, our company. The simple introduction is that Runabout Group is based in Zealand and is listed in the GSX, which was done in 2010. Therefore, is required to be IFRS compliant. Runabout Group offers pay-as-you-go hoverboard rentals, operates in 15 major cities, that is including capital city, and operates only in Zealand. Only hoverboard operator in these cities. The vision of the company is to keep Zealand moving. The mission, of course, is to offer an economical and efficient approach to micro mobility, harness both new and existing technologies, enrich our users' lives, create wealth for our shareholders. These are the four parts of the mission statement. The values to provide users with safe and convenient transportation, minimize the environmental footprint of its micro mobility solutions, protect the safety and dignity of its employees, engage with stakeholders to the mutual benefit of all. Then the precinct talks about the history of the company. Now this might not be extremely relevant, but it tells us how the company has been strategically changing over time. In 2012, a strategic review to respond to reducing demand for conventional bicycles were commissioned. Introduced electric bicycles with modified docks to enable battery recharging. Slightly higher fee and saw no significant positive demand change. By 2014, the government introduces law making helmet wearing mandatory for bicycle riders. This resulted in further reduction in demand and the company responded through discounted schemes. Two competing bicycle sharing schemes entered the market via capital city and quickly expanded and steadily grew. It's most likely that dock bike is one of them. 2016 is the year when runabout introduces hoverboards in western city. Docks were updated for hoverboard compatibility and the service quickly gained popularity, especially among tourists and shoppers, etc. As a result, Runabout was able to expand across Zealand to 15 cities as the only hoverboard operator. City authorities observed the impact of hoverboards to local mobility and also have announced that Runabout is the only company permitted to operate hoverboards for the foreseeable future. So keyword here, foreseeable future, important. Right. It can change at any moment in your unseen. Keep an eye on that. The product itself is manufactured by Minering Robotics in Dealand. Robust design originally made for industrial use for supervisors and security staff. Speed ranges between 5 miles per hour to 10 miles per hour. A fully charged hoverboard can travel up to 15 miles at an active walking pace. The useful product life can be used basically for 40 hours a week for up to 6 months. Right? This is our product. Looking at the workforce, when you read the pre-scene, you realize we have, have 15,000 strong in terms of our employer or employee base, which is a massive number. There are 2,000 planning and analysis staff alone operating from the head office. We seem to have a large amount of or large number of mechanics. Also, the precinct talks about van drivers. I'm thinking, do they have assistants or do they operate with mechanics or are the drivers mechanics? Somehow, the van fleet and the mechanics, they all in combination, they work so that these vans can be used to relocate hoverboards to ensure availability across the city and to respond to demand especially rush hour demand. The vans 
are also used to uplift faulty hoverboards. So we have our computer, uh, which you know has a self-diagnosis system, which is very useful, and basically we can uplift faulty hoverboards using the vans. Important element of the business is you really can't have passengers or users using faulty hoverboards and then getting into trouble ultimately ruining the reputation of the company. In terms of data, we have a deep understanding of micromobility in Zealand runabout. Uh, as far as the kind of data that we associate, the flow of pedestrians, interaction between different forms of public transport, user registration data, user credit card number and the CCV number, docking and undocking behavior, user location, app related data, usage and otherwise, hoverboard electronic self-diagnosis results. This is what I was talking about earlier and it's important. We also provide consultancy services to local town and city councils about transportation. Is this new business? Is this a way for us to strengthen our relationship with local town and city council authorities? Of course. Let's talk about the users and their behavior. The precinct tells us that we have 30.27 million registered users. Pre-registration is done through the web-based account and that is where the account gets created. Uh, to create the account, credit card details are input. Services, service access is through the mobile application, just like Uber. 43% of demand is during peak or rush hours. And what are these rush hours? In the morning, it's 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Sorry, 9 a.m. In the evening, it's 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Right? 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Evening, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Small typo there. Average hire period is 22 minutes per ride. That brings us to the user experience. How does a user use the service? So first what happens is you log into the app using the individual pin number. Then you locate the nearest docking station through the app. Then you input the dock number to the app and receive a five digit OTP. You enter the OTP and unlock hoverboard access. Then you, you know, get the hoverboard, you use the service. Once you've finished using, to return, you need to locate the nearest dock to return the hoverboard through the mobile app. Once you get to the dock, you can unlock a docking bay through the app and place a hoverboard, place the hoverboard in the bay. This is the user experience flow with respect to how runabout services are used by the user. What kind of safety assurance actions are in place by runabout? for the user. The hoverboard maximum speed has been restricted to 6 miles per hour, which is 10 kilometers per hour. At least 18 years old is the age limit, right? A minimum age limit has been set. You require a valid driver's license to use the service and this comprehensive insurance, which covers the, the cover automatically applies to a valid hire period, incurs significant insurance costs, cover is applicable for claims related to injury or property damage to users and injury or property damage to third parties, which is falls under the public liability insurance. Then the pre-scene goes on to talking about minoring robotics, a little specifics there. Right? They're part of our supply chain. They're really important because they are our sole supplier that makes things a little risky. The company is based in Deland. The company is an industrial equipment manufacturer. Hoverboards are used extensively in industrial and retail setting. The reason for choice is that Minering Robotic Hoverboard had a robust design originally made for factory use for supervisors and security staff. The product's useful life is 40 hours a week, up to six months. It has a wide range of customers around the globe. And Runabout is the only shared hoverboard services provider. So they have a lot of customers, but we are the only company that offers shared hoverboard service services to the general public that can be taken as a positive, also as a negative, right? In terms of Pareto, we lie in the lower 
uh, portion, right? The the minority, and from that perspective, one could say that we might not be a priority for the company. On the positive side, Minering could think that this is really a good space for them to expand on if they see it as a new market, new product, new uh, opportunity, because. If shared hoverboard service offerings are becoming popular globally, if that is the kind of setting that the unseen would set, then Minering could definitely look at expansion and viable options in that direction. That brings us to the executive board. So this is uh, headed by Mei, who is the chief executive officer. We have Alan Peters, director of operations, looking at collaborations with the city authorities, managing the docks and the fleet and legal issues. Uh, Pat Olly, human resources director, looking at staff recruitment, training, health and safety. Geo Patros, CFO, so probably your immediate supervisor, um, looking at management accounting, financial reporting and treasury, basically SEMA. Sean McDougall, IT director, maintenance and update of all operating software and apps. IT security and continuity. The non-executive committee, committee is made up of four members. Uh, Jack Caver is the chairman, Marco Palemo, Juliana Liang and Patrick Xu. Uh, these four, there are three combinations to form the risk committee with three members, audit committee with three members and remuneration committee with three members. I understand that Jack is not a chairman, not chairing any of these committees, but is a member in all three so a little uh, careful there in terms of corporate governance that brings us to the news summaries so we have all together about five news items the first one is ankle injuries of hoverboard users that have risen the reason is mainly overconfident hoverboard users jumping off the curb at maximum speed Repetition of this can cause the impact absorbing spring to weaken and break in our legs, which can lead to sprains and broken bones. Both children and adults are affected. Runabout advises users to never ride over obstacles and also to either use a pedestrian crossing or carry the hoverboard to crossroads. CIO of Dockby, which is the second headline, has criticized outdated IT courses, citing that they are far too theoretical and ignorant of real-world IT-related issues. DocBike is collaborating with Capital City University to offer a collaborative degree that combines academic study with practical experience and is expecting 150 students per year. CIO also observed that rideshare companies are heavily dependent on IT, employs more IT staff and that 14% of costs are IT-related. The third item, news item is uh, on the fact that banks criticize credit card customers in a recent report due to increased fraudulent transactions exposure. Key errors identified were physical security of the cards, failing to sign the signature strip, carelessness with the PIN number and CCV number, and banks warned that losses from fraud are unsustainable and cardholder could be held liable for losses in part or in full. The fourth news item is a university research report has found that the increase in number of bicycles is closely connected to the reduction in pedestrian accidents. This is attributed to traffic calming where motorists drive slowly owing to the bicycles on the road. The report also notes that hoverboards are making payments dangerous, but no conclusive evidence is available for this. However, there is a consensus among everyone that perceived risk associated to traveling is high during busy times. And the final news item is Zealand's transport minister and the city councillor of capital city are in major disagreement over regulating dock sites used by micro mobility companies. The minister hopes to impose stricter rules related to the sizes of docks and the minimum distance between docks and roads. The city councillor has objected citing that these decisions fall under the authority of the city councils that consider local conditions. And finally, the observations from the blog posts, which are summarized here for you. Users test the limits of the hoverboards outside the provided instructions and justify it due to the higher fee. Users may ignore warning signals when using the hoverboards. 
Users jump and race on the hoverboards and even damage the boards. Runabout has a mechanism that follows up the last use of a damaged hoverboard through a letter. Users have near misses from serious escalation of injuries and users are sometimes unaware of the 95 kg weight limit or its meaning in this particular blog post. But these are the key observations from those blog items and the comments provided. So that is the pre-scene summarization for the runabout pre-scene for May and August 2020 case study. So this is a tool that can really help you in your studying process, which is a short summary of the entire 25 page pre-scene document. You don't need to spend a large amount of time once you've read it. I hope you make good use of this. In addition to that, uh, there are a couple of things that I would like to share furthermore. And meanwhile, so those will come in the future. Meanwhile, make sure that uh, you write to me. You can connect with me in the links provided below over Facebook, over LinkedIn. You can email me and you can definitely comment on the comment section. If you like the video, do press the like button. And also just any thoughts and any suggestions, anything that you would specifically like to hear about. If I can get a consensus, I can definitely help you out. So until I see you soon, this is AZV signing out. Stay safe.